belief that they could do it, went to Manhattan and controlled a Kansas State team that was cocky and surprisingly complacent. Now as the Shockers come north, a cautious optimism supplements the questions that abound. Was Wichita State that good or was K-State that bad? Are they healthy enough to maintain the consistency with which they played a week ago? Will emotionalism be a trademark of this ball club? And most of all, does Minnesota simply have too much? Tonight, football players on this team will find out a lot about themselves and you'll be there with a front row seat as we are proud along the Kansas broadcasting system to bring you Wichita State football. From the Metrodome in Minneapolis, it's the Shockers and the Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota. And it's coming up next, right here. Minneapolis, the Wichita State Shockers meet the Minnesota Golden Gophers in exciting NCAA football action. Tonight's exclusive telecast is brought to you by Kansas State Bank and Trust Fund. The Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, a testimony to man's engineering ingenuity, an air support structure that opened in 1982. It's a building that has taken the cold bite out of the early winter here in Minneapolis. It's a facility that has spawned a great deal of controversy as well, as Billy Martin has chastised the roof as a ridiculous backdrop for a major league pop fly. Others have scoffed at the Texas League loopers that bounce into the crowd and turn into ground rule doubles. But this isn't baseball, it's football, and tonight it is the Backdrop as Wichita State goes after win number two against the Big Ten Golden Gophers from the University of Minnesota. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bruce Hurt along with Kerry Addington. And Kerry, right off the bat, the story for Wichita State is one of impending injuries. Yes, it really is. First of all, on defense, linebacker Kurt Weedenkiller has a, has a knee problem. He's looked slow as we've watched him here in the opening drills. We're not sure if he is going to go possibly even more serious. Cornerback Mo Foxworth also with a strained knee. He looked pretty good in the warm-ups. We expect him to play, and the Shockers are going to need him to play tonight as they try and do something against what looks to be a very explosive option offense from the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now, you talk a little bit about the explosive option offense of Minnesota. That explosive option offense is also tendered with a great deal of question marks because there's not a lot known about how Ricky Foggy and uh, some of the folks, as we take a look at the two head coaches, both from Kent State University, will operate tonight out of the option in Wishbone. It probably will be a, a big question mark because the defense of Wichita State is going to have to come in and first take a look at this option, see that, how they're going to deal with it, and then try and utilize those situations and see how they can match up their athletic talent against that of the Golden Gophers. It's going to be tough because they've looked at pass defense most of the spring getting ready for Kansas State, normal pro set type offenses of what they've worked against. They're going to see something very different tonight. So it's Wichita State. State and the University of Minnesota. It's coming up next right here on the Kansas Broadcasting System. As we take a look at the Wichita State Shockers entering the field of play, you've got to stop to think and wonder how the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome is going to affect their outlook in this first quarter. There could be an awful lot of standing around and looking at the facility. That's exactly what happened uh, about an hour and a half ago when they first came in to take a look at this place. A lot of jaws dropped, a lot of eyes opened up, and a couple of the guys uh, whipped out their Instamatic cameras to take a few shots of the place. They are obviously impressed by this facility, and it's uh, not hard to be this is quite a facility to play baseball as you mentioned or football it's going to be a little bit intimidating but I think uh, coming off last year's win or rather last week's win these guys know that they can get the job done and I think they are ready to play tonight you saw Lou Holtz in his second year coming off a four win season a year ago of course before that a very successful career at the University of Arkansas at North Carolina State and at William and Mary Ron Chismar in his second year at Wichita State coming off a two and nine record of a year ago of course and a six 16 to 10 win last week in a stunner in Manhattan against the Kansas State Wildcats. Wichita State has won the toss. They will receive the football. Minnesota will kick it away. One very good sign for the Shockers already in this game. Uh, one of the deep backs to receive the kick, Velasco Smith, number 26. He was also questionable coming into this game with a hamstring pull, but he is back there along with Eric Denson, and hopefully those two will make a difference in this game. Velasco Smith was a big difference on offense last week. Chip Longmiller will kick it away. 
away and we're underway in Minneapolis game two of the Wichita State season in 1985 Denson or excuse me Velasco Smith takes it two yards deep in the end zone and it'll be a touchback as Wichita State will get their first series on offense going at their own 20 yard line offensively carry what do we look for from Wichita State here in these opening series. Well let's take a look at the offense uh, here. I think we're going to probably see him try and air it out a little bit more. They really didn't throw the ball a whole lot last week. As we take a look at the offensive line, John Pratt, Pat Kane on the left side, Greg Edwards, the senior veteran in the center. And there are the backs and receivers, Brian McDonald, Eric Denson will start, and Jose Wilson will start at fullback today. There you go, strong right. Brian McDonald calling the signals. Kevin Pierce to the near side. Brock Fewen is flanked wide to the right. They split the backs. Long count and up the middle it goes and for good yardage popping it up off the right side was a Jose Wilson and it's good for a seven yard pickup Steve Thompson on the stop very important for Wichita State to get some continuity in the running game early so the passing game can open up as the game progresses. Well, if they keep making games like that they're not going to have to worry about the passing game good a hole opened up there on the right side by John Pratt and Pat Kane here we go second down only two to go. So a pickup of eight for Jose Wilson in and a surprise move as a starter in front of Dwight Eaton. The shocks now with a second and two situation. From the eye, Eric Denson takes a deep yardage for the first down as Minnesota's front line is yielding a bit. On the stop was Bruce Holmes as we take a look at the Minnesota defense coming up. Two plays and on a first down for Wichita State. They are moving the ball effectively. Joyner, Thompson, Rodas, had. And Dusebeck across the front for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This is their home opener. The Jerrion and Holmes in the middle. 5 2 defense played by Lou Holtz's Minnesota Golden Gophers. From the pro set, split backfield. Good yardage again by Jose Wilson as they trap the left side and across the 35 to the 38 on the stop for Minnesota. In the defensive backfield was Donovan Small and a host of others. Anthony Burke in there as well. So Wichita State on the initial drive moving the football. Second down four yards to go for the Shockers. They'll come from the eye. Hewen wide right. Pierce on the near side. Donald turns and yields up the middle is Jose Wilson again for first down yardage. And the Shockers are pecking away between the guards right now, Kerry, getting good movement from the people up front, Keith Blunt, Greg Edwards, and Pat Kay. And if you're wondering why Jose Wilson got the start, here's a good clue. He's running very hard. He ran hard in practice all week, and that time he just put his head down, spun forward for about three more, and we got another first and ten. Shockers going from their own 44-yard line. The initial drive of the ball game. if you've just joined us, no score from the Metrodome. Some 58,000 looking on here. Bruce Erdl and Kerry Addington, Mike side. Coming on the near side is Jose Wilson running out of yardage, and there's four or five crimson shirts quickly stacking them up on the play. And Minnesota has registered their first defensive big play of the ball game. Steve Thompson and Pete Nigerian on the play, and Nigerian in the middle. He's a dandy. Well, this time they tried to go wide around the left side, and there was nothing going there. Looks like they're going to have to stay in between the tackles. Jose Wilson really took a beating there. He's a little slow to get up, but he's all right. Little uh, wrench of the neck there. From the near hash mark, Wichita State facing a second and 12. Wilson to the top of your screen right. Denson, as McDonald drops back, looks for Denson on the near side. He's got running room, cuts it back up the middle. He's to midfield to the 45, inside the 45. Good for a first down as he popped the little quick screen on the near side, and Denson picked up good yardage into Minnesota territory. Well, you can't ask for anything more on this opening offensive drive. They've mixed it up pretty well. Their first time going back for the pass. Let's take a look as Brian McDonald drops back. He'll try and look the secondary away here briefly, then flip it over. And this is a, just a great job of running. Picking his way through the open field is Eric Denson. Wichita State gaining confidence as they march down the field. This drive started at their own 20-yard line. From the near hash mark, they split the backs. Brian McDonald 
out of St. Louis, Missouri, calling the signals. Gives it to Eric Denson. Denson with good running yardage, and he's finally knocked out of bounds, but not before he picks up yardage to the 35-yard line. And again, Wichita State continues to move the football on the ground and through the air. Now, this has to be worrying Minnesota head coach Lou Holtz because uh, this is a young defense. He's got two or three senior starters in this group. The rest of them are juniors and mainly sophomores. Most of them have been in the program three or four years, but they haven't seen a lot of game action. They're getting a taste right now. Second down, two for Wichita State. Jose Wilson with a quick opener. Lots of yardage across the 25, still on his feet before a host of Minnesota Gophers drag him down around the 22. But first yard, first yard ground uh, attack there for Wichita State, and it's a first down for the Shockers pickup of about 13 yards there for Jose Wilson and just look at the tough running we get from Jose right here coming over the right side he splits a couple of guys and he will not go down right there he's going to drag him for about three more Donovan Small the free safety rode him down at the 22 Shockers on another first and 10 they come from their own 20 the fans getting restless in the Metrodome another quick opener this time it stopped after a gain of two as Jose Wilson carried the football to the 20-yard line. Peter Nigerian on the stop along with Bruce Holmes and Ron Chismar has got to be pleased with this first effort. Undoubtedly. Now we're just about to the 20-yard line. This is what the coaches call the plus zone on offense. Once you get inside this 20, your game plan changes a little bit. This is also where the Minnesota defense has got to stop bending and stop breaking. They got to get tough here. They got to stiffen up and see what they can do. The guys up front for Wichita State doing a tremendous job on this initial drive as McDonald brings them set on a second and eight. Long count. They try the left side. Wilson cuts up. He's got yardage just shy of the 15. He's finally racked up there but not before picking up good yardage again. Jose Wilson running strong on the initial series of downs. For Wichita State, we'll get another look at this as Anthony Burke was the gopher in on the stop along with David Williams. And Burke just barely got Wilson here. Watching, he's almost on the ground, just reaches out there and manages to spin Jose around. Otherwise, he might have gotten a little bit more out of that. First third down situation facing Wichita State. They have a third and a long three, just shy of the 15-yard line. They start from the I formation. Now they split to the pro set. McDonald gives to the near side. Denson cuts up. He's got the first down to the 10 to the 5. He's to the 2 as the Shockers are knocking on the door. Eric Denson takes it near the goal line. Matt Martinez with a touchdown saving tackle. Again, strong, hard running there that time. The offensive line can open up holes. The quarterback can hand the ball off, but then it's up to the running back. And look right here as Denson puts the head down and drives. Good leg drive that time. And the Shockers are knocking on the door. Tremendous line surge led by Pat Kane off that left side as Wichita State has a first and goal at the two-yard line, moving the ball convincingly here in the opening moment. Denson off the right side, and he stopped shy of the goal line. He plunged forward to pick up maybe a half a yard on the stop. A host of Gophers led by number 93, Terry Harrisick. Well, you expected Wichita State to try and stuff it down the middle on this first and goal situation. That time the Gophers were able to uh, kind of jam things up inside there. It'd be interesting to see now what Wichita State will do on this second down play. They've had good success over the left side. Two tight ends in the ball game. Hawkins to the left, Owens to the right. Owens, remember, playing with a little bit of an injury. McDonald rolls to his right, has a man open in the end zone, and overthrows Jose Wilson. It'll bring a third down situation as Minnesota stiffens with their backs to the wall. Good call that time as they decided to go with the play action and a good decision that time by Brian McDonald not to try and force the ball in there. The Shockers have a tremendous game opening drive going right now. And they don't want to spoil it with an interception. Minnesota has got to feel like it'd be a moral victory right off the bat here to hold them to three points or at least force the possibility for a three point play from Wichita State as Brian McDonald is going to call timeout to talk it over with head coach Ron Chismar. So. With nine minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the opening frame, Wichita State moving convincingly, but at this point, stalled at the two-yard line. They'll face a third and two when we return. If you've just joined us, Wichita State took the opening kickoff and has moved it from their own 20-yard line right down the throats of the Big Ten Gophers from Minnesota. They face a third and goal at the two-yard line. 
Eric Denson gets it going wide right. He's met at the goal line, spins, and he's in for the touchdown. And the Shockers have gone 80 yards for the initial score of the ball game. Great second effort from the senior out of Titusville, Georgia. Absolutely a beautiful effort on the run there, and the Gophers can't quite believe it. A couple of the defenders just ran off the field, shaking their heads. They're shook up right now. Here we look at the pitch. He sees the hole, slams inside, and there's what you like to see, that spinoff motion. He did just barely get that ball over the strike. Correct myself, Titusville, Florida, of course, not Georgia. Although the Bulldogs might not mind having a back like Eric Denson. He stuck it in right there with some hard running, and it'll be Brad Fleeman to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Wichita State took the opening drive. They went 80 yards with it and stuck it in the end zone. It's a 7-0 ball game with 9-10 remaining in the first frame. So as we take a look at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, Wichita State right now, seven to nothing leaders as with nine minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first period, Brad Fleeman will kick it away. Mel Anderson is deep along with Gary Couch and Kenny Page. From the near hash mark, the freshman out of Cape and Mount Carmel will do his duties. Two for three from field goals last week against Kansas State. Of course, pressed into action because of the injury to Sergio Lopez Chavarro. Takes this one to the goal line. Anderson takes it to the 10. He's to the 20. Has running room to the 23. And he is converged on there by two or three white shirts as Wichita State will start defensively from their 24-yard line of Minnesota. Mel Anderson has set the University of Minnesota record for kickoff returns over 600 yards and 27 returns last year so he is certainly someone to be reckoned with Wilson Lilleberg Hitchcock Wilco Hobbins Starks across the front they are a strong offensive front with lots of good size up there Fogey Baylor Puck Couch and Anderson the backs and receivers for Minnesota they run the option and the wishbone they'll go from the eye and the opening series Bogey turns and gives to the first man. That's David Puck across the 25 to the 27-yard line. He's wrestled down there by Dave Mill. As we take a look at the defensive line, a 3-4 employed by Wichita State. There's Mel, Allen, Westfield, and Weatherby. Injuries, of course, a factor for Wichita State. We'll set the secondary when we can. Second down and seven yards as we take a look at Ricky Foggy. Foggy, someone that Minnesota is looking for to lead this offense this year. We'll talk about him as the game progresses. Comes to the near side. Valdez Baylor cutting it up just shy of the 35-yard line. Chris Badsyong, Daryl Whitley, and others for Wichita State. As we take a look at the defensive secondary for the Shockers, Foxworth, Cooper, Badsyong, and Whitley, and those are some mean hitters. They like to come up and headhunt. They are, and a Mo Foxworth, as we mentioned at the top of the game, was questionable coming in, but he looked pretty good in the warm-ups, told the coaches he felt okay, and he's out there right now. They're going to need his ability to roam all over the field with this option offense of Minnesota. Going to have to have a lot of running from sideline to sideline. Mo Foxworth is the kind of guy that does it. Man, actually, he has just stepped out of the ball game now. Guy Troop in instead as Minnesota's picked up their initial first down at the 35. Now they'll go from the wishbone. Foggy checking off at the line of scrimmage. Gives it to the first guy through, and that's Puck driving just shy of the 40, perhaps to the 38, as the Shocker defense stiffens there. It's going to be interesting to see how the Shockers react to this option offense. As we mentioned earlier, all they've looked at and all they've worked on has been pro-type offense, handoffs, straight uh, pro set, passing, things like that. And option offense presents a lot of difficulties for a defense they have to stay home they have to recognize they have to play a little bit smarter ball foggy facing a second down and seven this time they'll go from the eye option is on the ground ball loose Wichita State rummaging around and I think Minnesota finally came up with it but that is a concern the Minnesota coaching staff had before the ball game carry is that last week and the week prior to that in their scrimmage Trying to implement this option type game. They're having an awful lot of problems getting the ball to the people that they need to get it in the hands of. The ball was on the floor an awful lot, as we'll see it right here. That was just a bad exchange between Foggy and the fullback, David Puck, that time. And we see the ball bouncing around. The Shockers couldn't quite come up with it. Lucky break for Minnesota. Brings up the first passing situation for the Gophers as they have a third and seven. Going from their own 37-yard line. 
Foggy approaches center, has a single setback, drops back, quickly looking near side, has a man there. It's good for a first down and more yardage as Gary Couch is across midfield to the 45. Just a quick little out pattern, and Gary Couch, who's a converted tailback, made the play on the near side. Good for the first down. Foggy last year, you see his numbers, only a 47% passer as we take a second look. Gophers caught the Shockers a little bit of sleep that time. They threw in a different formation, single setback. They gave him an extra receiver, and that was the guy right there. They completed the pass, and now they're moving at the 45. Darrell Whitley and Kirk Allen on the stop as the Gophers go from their own 45-yard line. They're on the near hash mark. Wielding and giving to the first man. That's Puck picking up good yardage close to the first down. He's finally wrestled down by Chris Bansiong and Guy Troop, but Puck picks up yardage. Good for nine. The way the Shockers are trying to attack this option offense, they're bringing Don Weatherby in from the end and having him slam into Ricky Foggy on every play. Now watch him right here. This is what caused the problem two plays ago. That time Weatherby again in on Foggy, but he was able to get the handoff away that time. The option, of course, gives you a whole different look defensively for Wichita State, and it will be a period of adjustment as Lou Holtz paces the sidelines. Concerned about his defensive football team, certainly, but right now looking at the option for the first time in 85. Foggy this time going to the wide side. He's got running room. Checks his man off to the 30, and he's close to the 25-yard line as he falls to shy at the 27. Chris Badsyong and the Shockers pursuing make the play, but not before the sophomore out of Waterloo, South Carolina, picks up the first down. Foggy really telegraphed that play. He was leaning to his left before the snap. He's got a lot of room to operate here. He was smart not to make the pitch because the Shockers had the pitch man covered, but there was no one there to get in Foggy's face. They should have gotten into his face earlier, challenged him, made him keep the ball or pitch. You got to do something quick when you're defensing the option. Foggy last year, the Gophers leading rusher as well. This time he gives to the second man through. That's Gary Couch. And he's good for a yardage to the 25-yard line before Maurice Foxworth and Mitchell Morris combined to make the play. Mark Duckins in there as well. Now the Gophers have driven it down to the 20 of Wichita State. It's time to see if the Shockers are going to stiffen up here. Second. And a long five for the Gophers. It's been tit for tat. The Shockers took the ball from their own 20, drove it the length of the field, and put it in. Minnesota trying to answer back in earnest. From the I formation, bringing it on the near side, still with the football is foggy, and that time all sorts of pursuit by Wichita State stops the play. In on the stop for the Shockers, Derek Westfield, Chris Batsion. They defensed it very well that time. The inside backers took the dive man, which is their assignment in this ball game, and then the outside guys, the defensive ends, and the corners came in and collapsed on the quarterback, and he didn't have an option. That's what you've got to do. You've got to take things away early. You've got to stop the dive, then you've got to stop the quarterback, and someone's got to watch the pitch man. That time they did all three things well. Big third down situation last time. You'll remember they went to the near side. The quick out to Gary Couch. It's a third and long four. Foggy with a single setback. He's in the middle of the field, and he'll go quickly to his right. Under pressure, quick shuttle pass underneath, but he's going to be stopped shy of the first down. On the stop is Jim Mann and Donnie Weatherby, and it will be a fourth down situation, and we will see a field goal attempt. As the Shockers may have gotten fortunate right here, they read late, but they made the play defensively. Now, that wasn't quite the shuttle pass we're used to seeing. That's supposed to be a kind of a pitch forward. That time he had to lob it over the top of somebody's head. Chip Longmiller will try the field goal. He's from the middle of the field. This will be a 37-yard effort to kick this up, and it appears to be off and wide to the left. He was very true in his preseason work, or in his pregame workout, but he does not answer the call on a fourth down, so the Wichita State defense bends but does not break, and they'll get it on the change of possession at their own 20-yard line. All in all, not a bad defensive series for Wichita State on the initial series of down for Minnesota. Let's see if we can see what wrong here. He got a good snap and a good hold. He just knocked it to the left. No excuse that time, and a good break for Wichita State. Let's see what they can do on this second possession. Lou Holtz has had his experience against the Missouri Valley teams, and in particular Wichita State. That game was at Little Rock, Arkansas, 27-7, the final score, as the Shockers now in their second offensive possession of the ball game from their own 20. 
Deep in the backfield, it goes to Velasco Smith. Lots of running room. Good for a first down to the 30-yard line. Velasco Smith, the Floridian, with good yardage again. And the Shockers, with a good offensive surge off the people up front, drive for the first down. Well, on the last series, the Shockers showed the Gophers some power. Now they're going to show them speed and quickness in the person of Velasco Smith. Ron Chismar has got to be ecstatic about the way his club has responded here in the early going. As you see, a career 3-9 and nine record. Last year, of course, a total rebuilding season after the departure of Willie Jeffries to Howard University. Quick opener off the left side. This is Dwight Eaton seeing his first action of the ball game, and it's good for three yards to the 33-yard line. Actually, that was a second down situation. They said Velasco had come up just shy. So that, for good measure, picks up the first down. There we get a good look at Brian McDonald. And uh, last week and again today, I'm very impressed with this young man. I like his poise. I like the patience he has when he drops back to pass. He is the unquestioned leader of this offense. Now it's first down from their own 33. Wichita State has taken it 13 yards on two plays. Deep in the backfield, it's Velasco Smith again. This time the hole closes very quickly after a pickup of about one, maybe a begrudging two yards in on the stop. That's number 59 for the Gophers, Mark Dusebeck. That time, the Shocker offensive line got good surge. They moved some people back, but they didn't move anybody out of the way. There were no holes for Smith to find. He just jammed it up there and took what he could get. Second and nine, they give Velasco a yard on the carry. Shocks operating from their own 34-yard line. McDonald, play action. Rolls off to the right-hand side. Has Brock Fewin on the near sideline. Won't go for it. Instead, tries to scramble out. And he's finally pushed out of bounds by Steve Thompson. Pursuing on the far side. Brock Fewin, at that time, down the field. Appeared to be open about 15 yards down. But McDonald could not get the football to him. And it will necessitate a third and seven situation for Wichita State. McDonald had a couple people open that time. Uh, Brock Fewin on the sideline. He also had another receiver deep that was open. But again, he showed his experience and just took it out of bounds. That was a safe thing and the smart thing to do. McDonald last week, 11 for 18. He did not throw too many foolish passes, save for in that first series against Kansas State. So as Kerry mentioned, very intelligent thus far in the pocket. He'll try it again, this time rolling near side. He finds man Brock Fewin, good for first down yardage to midfield and a Wichita State first down as Dwayne Dotrell knocked him out of bounds. But Brian McDonald, showing the poise under pressure, hits Brock Fewin on the near sideline, and the Shockers are rolling again. That time, the Shockers had a crossing pattern going. Fewin was the slot back in that play. He ran down, came out. The outside man on that play came down the field a little bit, kind of picked off the defensive back, and that allowed Fewin to get open and make the reception. Very nice play. Brian McDonald, only a junior. That statistic will improve as his career progresses. From the near sideline, they go from the pro set. Velasco Smith running off tackle, and he is to midfield. A pickup of three tough yards on the play. In on the stop was Donovan Small and Bruce Holmes for the Golden Gophers. It's 7 to nothing, a minute 11 remaining in this, the first period of action. Bruce Hurdle and Kerry Addison live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Very glad to have you along on a Saturday evening. We hope your weekend is going well. It has started off very well for the men in white from Wichita. Shades of a week ago, perhaps in the offing here in the first 15 minutes of play. McDonald with a second and seven. Play action. Rolling right. Has a man. Velasco Smith near first down yardage, and they're going to give him a good mark. And I believe it'll be good for the first down as David Williams made the stop, and Smith is shaken up on the play. He was hobbled coming into the ball game, and he is right now on his back. He really got popped that time after he caught the football. He caught it, spun around, and immediately was hit up in the upper body. We're we see him down on the ground. It may be up in the facial area. He really got popped hard after that one. He was lucky to hang on to the football. So there's a timeout on the field, and uh, with the score 7 to nothing, we'll take a look at some of the scores from around the country today. Notre Dame carry a loser in their first outing against 
Rochem Beckler's Michigan Wolverines 20 to 12 in a game played in Ann Arbor. Wisconsin beat Northern Illinois today 38 to 17. Michigan State over Arizona State 12 to 3. Northwestern beat Missouri by a score of 27 to 23. Woody Weidenhofer not a very good debut in Columbia. Seven to nothing. 38 ticks of the clock left in the first frame. Velasco Smith on his back. We'll be back right up. So Velasco Smith has been taken to the sideline. He was up and moving and appeared to be okay. We'll take a second look as David Williams appeared to be the man that put the hit on Velasco Smith. Here you see it. Smith makes the grab. He's extended in the air and boom, right around in the head. So it appears to be a neck injury initially. We have no word on how severe it is. Eric Denson along the right side, Pike hoping along the far sideline and picking up yardage as Wichita State inside Minnesota territory, pushing it to the 40. Eric Denson, the all-time leading rusher in Wichita State history. Velasco Smith, not a very large individual, only five feet seven, 181 pounds. He played a tremendous game last week, really sparked the Wichita State offense. He would be a big loss if he was not able to come back tonight. Brian McDonald faces a second and seven as Wichita State moving the football again convincingly in their second possession. Quick opener to the 35. Runs Jose Wilson and the Shockers will be faced with a third and two. David Williams again on the stop with Donovan Small. So the Wichita State running backs getting into the Minnesota defensive secondary. And anytime, of course, that happens, you're going to be picking up yardage. That's right. The uh, Gophers have a sophomore nose guard, Steve Rhoda, 6'2", 235 pounder. He's going up against a senior for the Shockers and Greg Edwards. So far, Edwards is winning the battle. We've come to the end of the first period of action. Wichita State playing convincing football in the Metrodome. It's a seven to nothing ball game. The Shockers on top of the Golden Gophers. Eric Denson has just picked up first down yardage for Wichita State as we join you back a little late. Good to the 30 yard line and another Wichita State first down. We are now just inside the second period of action. Wichita State on an 80 yard drive capped off by a one yard plunge from Eric Denson. Makes the score seven to nothing, and that is where we are to this point in time in the ball game. There's Pete Nigerian. He's a good one uh, for Minnesota, one of the few homegrown boys on this Golden Gopher Club. 6-1-208, led the team in tackles a year ago, and he has been tested already here tonight by a poised Wichita State offense. Coming to the near side, Denson picking up yardage across the 30 to the 29. He's racked down there after a short pickup of two on the play. Shockers need to keep things in between the tackles. That's where they're having the most success. This time they went outside just a little bit. No running room this time for Eric Denson. He gets kind of caught up there. Doesn't get a whole lot. But as we were talking about just before the break at the end of the quarter, Greg Edwards, Pat Kane, and Keith Blunt, the middle three men in that Shocker offensive line, are really doing a job so far. Most of the Shockers' yardage has been between the guards. They've also utilized the tackle and the size of Jerry Quick on the quick side tackle. McDonald this time rolls out to throw. Looking down the field, has a man there, and it's tipped away. We have penalty flags on the play in that general vicinity of holding. And we'll have to wait and see what the initial indication is. And we have illegal use of hands against Wichita State, a dead ball foul. They'll take another look at it as the band tries to get this defensive unit hopped up here at Minnesota. Well, just about the time we talk about how great those guys up front are playing, one of them makes a mistake. There was holding on the left side, possibly Keith Blunt, the guilty party that time, and that's going to march him way back. So they'll hop it back 15 yards, and Wichita State will also lose a down on the play as they'll take it now from the 44 of the Golden Gophers. Brings up about a third and, oh, I'd say 24 yards. Maybe we might see that little crossing pattern again. Now what you'd ideally like to do is at least get it into some type of position for Brad Fleeman to try a field goal attempt. Such would not be the case right now. McDonald splits his backs. 
Long count, straight drop back. Looking down the field, has a man, Kevin Pierce. He had it. It slipped through his hands. You got to think he might have heard footsteps back there because that should have been a reception. Well, he had a guy coming up right behind him, and again, he was extended. Perhaps he was thinking about what happened to Velasco Smith when he was trying to haul in one over his head. Pierce, a little bit taller guy, a lot bigger. He's the kind of guy who you want to catch that ball. And there we take a look at it. He's up, and it goes right through his hands. You saw him turn and look at the guy behind him. Perhaps you were right there, Bruce, with the footsteps idea. We'll give him a net next time. Funny situation in Dave Armagas. Another Capen graduate. This time feels it like a shortstop and gets off a nice kick to boot. Ball comes down at the 15-yard line. Ball fumbled on the play, and Wichita State... Ball bouncing around the goal line, and we'll have to wait to see who comes up with it. All sorts of folks were banging it around, and the Shockers are pointing it their way, perhaps wishful thinking, as they unpile at the goal line. They had it for a second there at about the three, and it just squirted out. We'll wait and see who's got it. The ball came down into the hands of Joe Brooker. He was not able to make the play, and Wichita State has recovered at the one-yard line. What a break for the Shocker defensive unit. We'll take a second look as Armagost made a great athletic effort just to get the ball away. He almost had it blocked. He gets the punt away, and there, ooh, right in and out of the hands. Good stop there on the play, and the chase is on. Unbelievably, while the ball was still skidding around, some of the Minnesota players were already signaling that they had recovered playing referee instead of getting in there in the pileup. They didn't deserve to recover that ball. That was Gary Couch with the fumble as the Shockers take it from the goal line. Eric Denson tries his luck off the right side, and he's met at the goal line. No gain on the play. The entire left side of the Minnesota defense in on the play. It'll bring a second and goal for Wichita State. They're Lou. knocking on the door of prosperity here. Lou Holtz very upset. He went over and had some words with a couple of those guys, maybe those uh, part-time referees we were just talking about. Some quick words from the coach. Oh boy, I bet they <laughs> weren't too nice. Second down, goal from the one-yard line. Brian McDonald will set him from the eye. Two tight ends. First man through is Dwight Eaton, and it's up and in for a touchdown, and the Shockers are up by two all of a sudden. 13 to nothing, and who would have thought it? The Shockers are believing in themselves as the game progresses. And, Kerry, we talked about it before the ball game. We talked about it last week. As we take a look at Dwight Eaton, they gain confidence as the game goes along. If they're in it at halftime, they can steal a ball game in the second half. There we see Dwight Eaton just taking it over the top and in. You know, as we were watching the pregame warm-ups, we uh, were mentioning the fact that none of the Minnesota punt receivers were able to catch the ball. They were flopping all over the place. There we saw it there, and it winds up as six and possibly seven points. Brad Fleeman will try to tack on the extra point. He is successful, and all of a sudden, can you believe it? Shake your head in Wichita. The Shockers are up 14 to nothing, and I'm here to tell you they're looking convincing in the process. We'll be back. Live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Wichita State right now jumping all over Minnesota. They lead it 14 to nothing, and Brad Fleeman will kick it away as Minnesota will try to get their heads out of the clouds because right now they are not playing good football. That, of course, necessitated a bit by the aggressive play of the guys in white. Fleeman sends it away, and the ball comes sailing out of bounds at the 15. He didn't hit that well at all. And so the freshman from Cape and will try it again. Fleeman, of course, playing in the place of Sergio Lopez Chavarro, one of the fine kickers in the country. And we send our best wishes along to Sergio tonight, watching back in Wichita. Wish we were here, pal, but Brad Fleeman will try to pick it up in his stead. The Gophers know that the Shockers have only one place kicker, and I saw a rather disturbing thing on that last kickoff. Steve Peterson, one of the up men for Minnesota on the kickoff return team, just uh, blew off trying to knock anybody down. He ran right across and tried to hit Fleeman and knock him down. I'm not saying he was going for him, trying to hurt him, but it was unusual. You usually don't try and block 
the kicker out on the return team. He's the last guy you worry about. That time, there was a deliberate attempt made to put Fleeman on the ground. And it may, of course, rushed his delivery a little bit and sent the ball sailing out of bounds some 20 yards prematurely this time. Gets a good foot into it to the far sideline. It's picked up by Anderson. Mel Anderson, the all-time leading punt kickoff returner in Minnesota history, and he's going to show you why. Driving past midfield, and he's finally knocked out of bounds along the far side for Wichita State by Freddie Gaines. There is a penalty marker on the play. Uh, we'll take a look at Mel Anderson. He's the all-time kickoff returner for this Minnesota club, and he shows you why right here with some good blocking, but also exceptional ability. And he just glides on this return, makes a nice move, covers the ball with two hands, just like you're supposed to do. We do have a flag on the play, and let's check. It's against Minnesota, so that kickoff return will be negated offside against the Golden Gophers. So I think what we'll see is another kickoff. They'll move it back up to the 40, and so they're playing seesaw here in Minneapolis. The crowd now beginning to become a factor in this game. We have an estimated 58,000 fans in here, and I guarantee you about 57,975 of them are Gophers. Well, the Wichita State coaching staff and talking to them before this football game felt this club had a chance to play with Minnesota if they could keep their confidence going throughout the early part of the ball game, if they could get some sustained drives on offense. They've been able to do that once. If they got some breaks, that's another if that has been realized thus far. And right now, Wichita State leading 14 to nothing despite the fact they've had one major break at the goal line they're still controlling the line of scrimmage they really are and another thing you have to consider right now is that minnesota is an option offense team and that is not a catch-up type offense so they are going to have to get ricky foggy into motion and getting him throwing the football brad fleeman for the third time gives it a route this time you'll send mel anderson two yards deep in the end zone and he's going to go to a knee Kind of strange there. He had all kind of room to run. There wasn't anybody within 25 yards of him when he downed the ball. Maybe he's tired. Or disgusted. One or the other. Perhaps not as disgusted as this man, Lou Holtz. Minnesota offense will start from their own 20. If you've just joined us, the score is 14 to nothing. Ron Chismar and his troops on the top end of a big stick right now. Chismar pacing the sidelines like he's a nervous man of some kind. The calm before the storm, perhaps, but his shockers have been responsive here in the first half of action. Foggy from his own 20 sends a man in motion. That's Couch. They'll go from the eye formation. Second man through. Driving to the 24-yard line on the play is Valdez Baylor. Baylor on the season last year, 51 attempts, 242 yards, good for 4.7 yards a carry. And we'll take a look at him here. Take a look at it one more time. They wrap him up, but they can't quite pull him down. He lunges forward for about four or five more. Nice effort on the carry there. The Gophers know they are not out of this game by a long shot. They still are showing effort. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Not too many homegrown products on this Minnesota football team on either side of the football. Foggy on a second and seven. Play action. Rolling to his right. He's got room. Looking downfield. Has couch wide open, and he makes the play at the 44-yard line. He's marked down by Chris Badsiong, but not before Minnesota. Comes up with a first down, and that time, Foggy, who had all sorts of time to run the football, opted for the pass, and it comes up roses for the Gophers. That time, the Gophers flooded the left side of the Shocker defense. They had three guys spaced, as you see there, about 10 yards apart and that time Foggy just took the middle man. Wichita State in the secondary, a little soft perhaps with the 14-point lead, 11.53 and counting down in the second period of action. Stay with us at halftime. We'll have an interview with Lou Perkins, talk about the progression of the athletic department at Wichita State under his tutelage. Ricky Foggy checking off at the line of scrimmage, going from the wishbone. Takes the first man through, keeps it along the right-hand side, cuts up and picks up five, six yards across the 50 to the 48 before he's finally wrestled down by Chris Badsiong, Kirk Allen, and others. Derek Westfield in on the play as well as the Shockers linebacking core flows to the play. Ricky Foggy, last year 168.3 yards a game in total offense. He took over in the Ohio State game of his freshman year, fourth game into the season, and he has been the man to direct this offense ever since. They're expecting big things from him, and on his second and four, he faces a Shocker defense across the 50-yard line. They go from the wishbone. This time they pitch wide to the left. Coming up and hep 
putting on a big stick was Derek Westfield from his linebacking position. He wrapped up Gary Couch for a loss back to the Minnesota 47. Great read and flow by number 40, Derek Westfield, the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And there again, as we saw, Don Weatherby came in and attacked Foggy again. He was barely able to get that pitch off. And that's what caused that play to come up as a loss. You've got to go in and hammer on that quarterback when you're defensing the option. Third and a long six for the Gophers. 14 to nothing, Wichita State leading. Straight drop back. Foggy has time. Now scrambles off to his left, has room. He'll pick up the first down as the Shockers don't contain. And then running across the 40 into the 35, 36-yard line, Ricky Foggy is finally knocked down by Derek Westfield coming back, but it's a first down for Minnesota. And a big play as the Shockers defensively lost contain. And this is even worse than completing the pass. This is what the Shockers didn't want to see. Ricky Foggy, a tremendous athlete in the open field. And right there, Derek Westfield just barely tripped him up. Mel Anderson was wide open on this route. He went deep past Randall Cooper. Look at that. He's got a couple of steps. But Foggy turns it up for the first down anyway. From the 37. Shows pass action. Now running the football to the 25. Just shy of the 20. And he's finally knocked down there on the play by Derek Westfield and Randall Cooper. But in talking to the coaches before the first uh, play of this ball game, as we take a second look, the quarterback is the player that beats you in the option game, and that's what the coaches were afraid of. They did not want Ricky Foggy getting into this type of flow offensively for Minnesota. And obviously now that's exactly what Lou Holtz wants to do. He wants Ricky Foggy to take control of this game, even if he just backs up, looks people off, and takes off like he did on that play. That's a good play for the Gophers. First down at the 24-yard line. Ricky Foggy has his Gophers on the move. Puck off the right side across the 25 to the 22-yard line, and the Shocker defense is yielding a bit right there. Kirk Allen and Derek Westfield, the tandem of inside linebackers, made the play, but not before Puck picked up good yardage. And bang, there's uh, Weatherby again, and now Foggy knows he's going to come in and hit him. Foggy made the handoff and then got his hands up to knock Weatherby away, so that defensive strategy is working. Foggy is thinking about getting hit, and that's exactly what they want to accomplish. They want him a little bit rattled. He has not shown any inconsistency on this drive, however. He faces a second and long three. He'll go from the eye. This time comes to the left side. Pitches. And across the 15 to the 12 is Valdez Baylor. Picking up yardage is Chris Badsiong. And Daryl Whitley finally knocked him down along with Kirk Allen. But Baylor picks up yardage for the first down. Outstanding execution that time by Foggy. They come on the reverse motion. Foggy spinning, coming out. He's wrapped up, but makes the nice pitch, and they get a good gain out of it. Darrell Whitley came up to meet him, but Minnesota's knocking on the shocker door. In his career, 704 yards, 4.2 yard per carry average. It was a fairly anemic rushing offense put forth by Minnesota last year. That evidenced by the fact that Foggy with 647 yards gained, was the leading rusher for the Golden Gophers. Wichita State has taken time out, and so will we as Ricky Foggy goes over to talk it over with Lou Holtz. It's 14 to nothing, 838. It could be changing. So Minnesota with a first down from the 11-yard line, and there's no question that this Gopher offense is showing some different things to Wichita State, some different complexities that were not there last weekend against Kansas State. That's absolutely true, and as we mentioned earlier, defensing the wishbone is an entirely new world for these Wichita State Shockers. So far, they've been able to make up for maybe a lack of experience with that offense with intensity. But uh, at other times, they've been confused, and at other times, just plain out guessed. Two tight ends from the wishbone. First down and 10. They can pick up a first down at the one-yard line. They try the near side. This time, holding up with the ball is Foggy, and he is into the end zone. A touchdown for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. And I'll tell you, they move the football down the field very impressively on that offensive drive, and 58,000 
are very happy about the offensive prowess of Ricky Foggy on this particular play and indeed the entire drive. Now take a look at this fake right here. He looks for all the world like he's going to pitch it, but he sucks it back in at the last minute and just weaves his way into the end zone. Tremendous athletic ability. And that ability of Ricky Foggy is the very thing that the Shocker coaching staff was afraid of coming into this ball game. Chip Low Miller will try to make it a seven point Minnesota deficit and it's up and good. So we have a 14 to seven ball game now. The complexion has changed and the crowd is alive at the Metrodome 14 to seven 832 remaining in the half. 14 to 7, there's Ricky Foggy, pretty much the sole sustenance of the Minnesota offense on that last drive. Low Miller will kick it away. Velasco Smith and Tony Gilbert now deep for Wichita State. We don't know if Eric Jensen is injured as Velasco has the ball bounce off his shoulder pads and he'll finally down it in his own end zone. Shockers have been a little bit tentative in their kick returning as we take another look at Ricky Foggy and he was the offense for the team in Crimson. Now you see it, and now you don't. Boy, he fooled the defensive end on that play. Tremendous fake then by Ricky Foggy. He knows he made a good effort. 11-yard touchdown run caps off the drive that went 80 yards. Ricky Foggy. They're touting him for postseason honors here in the Big Ten Conference. Good to see Velasco Smith back on the field on that kickoff reception. Wichita State has Tony Gilbert in the ball game now. We don't know if Eric Denson is injured or what his status is. We'll try to come up with that as trying off the middle was Jose Wilson across the 20 to the 23-yard line. All there's sudden, Pete Nigerian who was in on the stop. Kurt. Excuse me, Bruce. All of a sudden, we see a fired-up Minnesota Golden Gopher defense. They get a few points on the board, and now these guys are coming in and hitting and stuffing things up the middle. It's up to the Shockers now to keep the pressure on and remain aggressive on offense. That is the heart and soul of the Minnesota defense, Peter Najarian. 144 tackles he was in on last year. Quick count, McDonald rolling to the near side. He has time looking up the field. It's nearly picked off, and Fewen makes a great play along the sideline. Holy moly, how about this catch? from the junior out of Heston, Kansas. You're not going to see any better concentration in your life, no matter how long you watch or play football. This is a tremendous, tremendous show of concentration. McDonald lets go of the ball. It is almost intercepted, bounding away. Fewen on the tightrope, hauls it in and down. Big, big play for Wichita State as they're able to hopefully garner a little momentum as the ball is now down at the 43-yard line. Brock Fuen, 164 very nimble pounds out of Heston, Kansas. Quick count again near side. Tony Gilbert carrying the ball for the first time out there like a loaf of bread as he had it ripped away for a second but held on and picked up yardage to the 47-yard line. That catch by Fuen, even though uh, it was a substantial gain, it means even more in terms of mental attitude for this team. They needed something to kind of break up the uh, momentum that was given there by the scoring drive for Minnesota. Let's look at it one more time. Tip looks like it's out of play, and Fuen in there, and he just kept those feet in. The referee right on the play. Great camera work, gang. Great camera work on that. Second down and six. Straight drop back. Looking near side. Fuen again makes the play. They have a penalty marker on the play. It was a late marker, and we'll have to wait and see what the indication is. I think it's going to be against the Shockers. I think we had some... Uh, movement by one of the receivers downfield trying to shield a linebacker off of that play. Well, it looks to be on Jose Wilson if I was gauging the play correctly. But unfortunately for Wichita State, it is another illegal use of the hands call. It'll then knock it back another 15 yards. It'll be a loss of down. More importantly for Wichita State, and those are the type of mistakes that obviously a team like Wichita State cannot afford. Many teams can't afford that type of play, but certainly... The Shockers in a situation like this can ill afford it. No loss of down on this play. Excuse me. It'll be a second down or check it. It will be a third down situation for the Shockers. Third and about 20 from their own 32 yard line. Lou Holtz is pleased with that call. Eric Denson is out of the lineup. Tony Gilbert in in his place. McDonald this time is being chased along the far side, and he's going to go down. 
As Minnesota is rejuvenated defensively, Steve Thompson and Bruce Holmes applying the defensive pressure. And so Wichita State, hampered by a penalty after a couple of good efforts by Brock Buen, will have to kick the football away. And this time, the protection just broke down as Holmes was coming right from the start. No win situation that time. They had everybody covered. McDonald had nowhere to go but down. Armagos will kick it away for Wichita State as Minnesota starting to turn the tide momentum-wise. Again, he takes it off the carpet. And it's a poor kick as it comes off the side of his foot. Gets a Wichita State bounce sideways to the 35-yard line. So Minnesota will have good field position as they begin their drive with six minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half of action. It was all Wichita State initially. They got the break on the fumbled punt at the one-yard line. Dwight Eaton went over. That, of course, was preceded by a touchdown from Eric Denson, who went over from one. It was a 14 to nothing lead, but Ricky Foggy took him the length of the field and went in from 11 yards to make it 14 to 7. And that's where we stand at this point with six minutes, 16 seconds left in the first half. And there you saw Coach Lou Holtz telling Foggy just to settle down. Let's stick to our game plan. We're going to be able to move the ball on these guys. Let's just not make a mistake and we'll be all right. Plenty of time left in the football game, obviously. You want to get it back in bits and pieces, not in one fail swoop. Play action from the eye. Foggy with time looking downfield. He's got a man wide open on the near side. Chris Batsyong knocks out Melvin Anderson. But the Shockers have some disorganization, I think, on their defensive reads in the secondary because receivers have been open all night long. I don't know if players are getting picked or what the situation is. But let's watch it again as Foggy delivers this ball very nicely indeed. Really nice play. Melvin Anderson uh, was just went right down the sideline, had nobody there. Too little too late for the secondary of the Shockers. Anderson a little angry because the ball wasn't delivered on the fly. If it was, it might have been six. That's right. First down at the 33. They're on the Shocker side of the field. First man through his puck. Good yardage. Kirk Allen wraps him up. Then Chris Badsyong comes flying in there along with Daryl Whitley. But not before Puck picks up yardage across the 30 to the 28-yard line. Indeed, just shy of the 27. David Puck has picked up the tough yardage inside. Ricky Foggy has picked up the glory yardage outside in a 14 to seven ball game, but Minnesota is answering back. From the near hash mark, optioning the left side, lots of running room, moving it upfield is Ed Penn, Kirk Allen made the stop at the 25 yard line just shy of a first down. The Gophers are doing exactly what they want to do on offense right now. They're using the option. They're mixing things up. They've gone with a deep pass. That time a good wrap up there by Kirk Allen. But Minnesota is sticking to their game plan and they are moving the football. Minnesota coming off the right side. Short yardage situation. That's Valdez Baylor with what appears to be a first down, and indeed it is the interior defensive line for Wichita State on the play, but Minnesota gaining the momentum after a good defensive series is bringing the ball down the field and challenging this Wichita State defense. Minnesota is huge, just huge along that offensive line around the front. They go 270, 265, 260, 265. It goes on and on. They are big. And they are controlling, certainly, the line of scrimmage over the last couple of series of downs against this Wichita State three-man front. Foggy from the middle of the field gives to the first man. That's Puck, and he is stopped quickly on the play by Derek Westfield and Donnie Weatherby. Puck's an interesting guy. He's out of uh, Washington High School in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He was a three-sport letterman there, but he was also the school's valedictorian. He propelled it to the 21 yard line where it's a second and eight for Minnesota trailing in the ball game 14 to seven trying to even it up or at least cut the deficit from the wishbone foggy around the right side and he's going for six as the Shockers are going to have to find some way to contain Ricky foggy as he is just doing all sorts of things against this Wichita State defense that time he optioned the right side and no one 
was within striking distance throughout the entire run. No, I mentioned confused a little bit earlier and outguessed, and uh, we just saw a perfect example of him there. Watch Foggy this time. He sees the daylight open immediately and just jumps up through the crack. He knows what to do with it, and you're not going to catch him. He's got a lot of speed and a lot of smarts, and now he has two touchdowns. 6'1", 185 pounds, and he can move it out. Low Miller will try the extra point. The placement is down. The kick is up, and it's good, and we have a tie ball game. So the tide has most explicitly changed here indeed as Wichita State controlling the opening moments of this ball game right now have seen themselves turned back on a couple of occasions by this Minnesota offense which is right now just wearing down the Shockers with their superior size some good outside speed but in particular the offensive maneuvering of quarterback Ricky Foggy and that indeed was the key for the Wichita State defense before the ball game there were absolutely no secrets about it whatsoever Ricky Foggy was the key and thus far the Shockers have not been equal to the task of stopping him. Well, the Gophers have uh, taken Weatherby out of that little tactic that he had been using earlier in the game of coming in and hitting Foggy on every play. For some reason, that hasn't been working lately. If you leave Foggy alone, if you don't disturb him, if you don't hit him, he's just going to run for a touchdown. So Low Miller will kick it away as we're all even. The Shockers, remember, led in this ball game 14 to nothing. Eric Denson and Velasco Smith are deep to receive the kick. As with 3.52 remaining in the ball game, or excuse me, the first half, Low Miller sends it to the near side. Velasco takes it at the one. He has not fielded a kickoff cleanly yet. He shows his disgust by slamming the ball to the turf. And Wichita State now is faced with the pressure of moving from their own 20-yard line. You can tell right now the Shockers are a little bit rattled. Look at the way Velasco tries and field this ball up with his hands over the shoulder like that. You're just not going to catch a high, deep boot like that. He knows it. You notice the Shockers wearing basketball shoes on this super turf. The backs, the ends, the receivers, everybody who has a chance to handle the ball has gone to basketball shoes tonight. Key set of downs here for Wichita State. They must gain some momentum back and move the football a little bit, regain some of that confidence lost over the last couple of series. Quick opener, Dwight Eaton seeing his second carry of the ball game, his only other one, a touchdown plunge. And it's good for four yards to the 24. On the stop was number 68. Gary Had and Bruce Holmes for Minnesota. It's important now for the Shockers to also try and keep to their game plan. They don't want to try and get on top in a hurry. They want to just move the ball down the field. Lots of time left. 320 and ticking away in the first half. McDonald from the eye. Now he splits his backfield. Has Skewen to his left. Kevin Pierce on the near side. Play action rolling out. In the flat, Denson. And the ball pops loose. McDonald is delivering it to his receivers. They are not catching the football, save for Brock Fewen. Well, that time... That time, Denson just took his eyes off the ball. We're going to have an isolation on him here coming out of the backfield. He's going to look in, then come out. The ball's delivered crisply right between the numbers, and it just popped out. It's lucky it wasn't intercepted. If someone else had been in the area, that would have been a freebie. 5'11", 184 pounds. He ran impressively in that first few series of downs. Has not seen the ball much and indeed took a little rest over the last couple of series as we saw Tony Gilbert Denson back in the ball game along with Dwight Eaton third down and a long five they try the screen on the left side Denson with running room has the first down he's across the 30 to the 33 all right that's the type of movement they need and they pick up the first down on a relatively safe offensive play David Williams making a stop there. He's been on a lot of stops this afternoon, or rather this evening, and earlier was the guy that took Velasco Smith out of the game for a while. But this is a good call now for Wichita State. Relatively safe. They're dumping the ball off to the open man in the flat. Denson does a good job moving it out over the 30-yard line. So Wichita State with a little breathing room to the 33. 248, time ticking down in the first half of action. We're all even, 14 apiece from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. From the eye formation, gives it to the second man back. Denson with good running room. Agran across the 40 to the 42. Good surge again by the folks up front. And Wichita State's got something on the burner as the first half comes winding down. 
I think Denson was a little bit upset about his drop three plays ago. He's showing a lot of intensity right now, running hard as he did in that opening drive when the Shockers went 80 yards to score and take a 7-0 lead. Ron Chismar's size club go to 14-0 in the ball game. Minnesota has since answered with two Ricky Foggy touchdowns, both on options. Second down and a short two for the Shockers. Operating from their own 42. Dwight Eaton for the first down yardage and more across the 45 to the 46. Clock will stop as Peter Nigerian made the stop along with David Williams. They'll move the chains and the Shockers will see if they can punch it down there and perhaps salvage a field goal. So far on this drive they've been going uh, dive screen dive screen and there we see an injured Shocker going off the field. Maurice Foxworth with an injured right ankle. He was banged up coming in and that is certainly not a good sign for Wichita State as he heads to the locker room. First down for the Shockers. Denson off left tackle. Spinning but can't get away as Nigerian was in on the stop. Peter Nigerian out of Minneapolis. 6'2", 222 pounds. Good size for an interior linebacker as we have a man down on the field for Wichita State. Denson running the ball but Nigerian all over him. Nigerian's the heart of this defense. They pretty much try and tie up other people and let Nigerian roam around. And as we uh, mentioned, there was a shocker down on the field. He is the senior center, Greg Edwards, who was also shaken up last week. He's down right now, and the trainers are looking at that left knee. Now you can see him unstrapping it right now, and that is certainly, and he is shooting some pain through that knee. Dr. Eugene Kaufman, Doug Vandersee, and the medical staff for Wichita State University. Dr. Ray Cook, also of our eyewitness news staff. Game being seen live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. There's Big Greg, 253 pounds out of Chicago, Illinois. And that'll bring Willie Womack into the ball game. And that's a little dangerous. You don't like to see your center go out, certainly with an injury. You don't like to see anyone go out, although he's moving pretty well. But the center position is so key because, of course, the transference of ball from one man to another is so important. Now, Womack had to come in a little bit last week when Edwards uh, was detained momentarily in the game in Manhattan. So he got a little bit of taste under fire. We'll see how he responds here. Second and 11 for Wichita State. They're operating at the 45-yard line. They'll go from the pro set. Minnesota showing blitz. Nigerian moving up into the line. Play action. McDonald being pressured. Runs out of the pocket to the 45. Just shy of the 50. He's wrestled down on the play by Larry Joyner. Gary had in there as well as a pickup of six on the play. Nonetheless, by Brian McDonald, who shows his versatility in so many ways. He also uh, shows a frightful way of handling the football. He's got that ball out and in, out and in all the time. He puts it away at the end. Still a little bit scary. So the Shockers with a third and six. Nigerian again showing blitz. Joyner moves up into the line. They're showing a six-man front is Minnesota. And they come with all six of them. Still he has time as McDonald threads the needle and finds Eddie Hawkins for the first down. Great poise under pressure by Brian McDonald. He hit the tight end before Mark Dusebeck knocked him down. But Eddie Hawkins playing in the stead of Jack Owens picks up a key catch for Wichita State. Watch McDonald here. Wait, wait, wait. He waits for his man to clear. He's got people on him and just sticks it right in there. Very, very nice pass. Good catch. Dusebeck laid a good hit on Eddie Hawkins. But that's 202 pounds, six foot three inch junior made the play. And now with the first down, the Shockers are thinking about putting points on the board with 29 seconds left. And there's a timeout on the field right now. Eddie Hawkins, of course, pressed into starting service in this game with a uh, injury to the starting tight end, Jack Owens. And Hawkins looked pretty good on that last play. Uh, plenty of time here to run a couple of more snaps, get into a little bit better field goal position for Brad Fleeman. Brad Fleeman with a good foot, certainly, and uh, a 50-yarder is not necessarily well within his range, but it's a possibility in this good air here in the Metrodome. No wind against him, no cross currents, as Ron Chismar and his offensive brain trust talk it over with Brian McDonald along the far sideline. If you've just joined us, there's 29 seconds remaining and this the first half of action. Live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Shockers got out in front 14 to nothing. They have since acquiesced and given Minnesota two of them back. Ricky Foggy 
pretty much the sole offensive impetus from this Minnesota ball club as he's knocked him in twice from 11 yards and from seven on the option plays and Minnesota has clawed their way back into this ball game and have tied it up at 14 all the Shockers however trying to respond now with 29 seconds left in the first half of action. Shocker coaches of course have a lot of confidence in Brian McDonald. They're just letting him know what his options are. They're going to tell him exactly what they want to do. Of course, they'd love to get in the end zone, but probably at this point, they're going to try and get into good field position, give, give Fleeman a good chance at getting three points on the board and giving the Shockers the lead at the half. Wichita State has one timeout remaining. On the far hash mark, McDonald calling the signals. He splits his back. That's Denson and Eaton, and he drops it straight back. Looking along the far side, finds Denson across the 40 to the 35, makes a good move, keeping on his feet, but he was unfortunate in not being able to get out of bounds at the 35, and the clock ticks down to 16 seconds. Shockers will try to hurry it up. 13 seconds, 12 seconds. McDonald with eight seconds left. Calling the signals. And now he'll just throw it out of bounds. With one second left, they'll get Brad Fleeman in the ball game to try to tack on three points. Didn't want to use the timeout, apparently, and take another shot at getting the ball down the field further. Interesting offensive philosophy. As Ron Chismar. I think they're going to be content whether they hit this field goal or not. They're going to be glad to be in this ball game. Of course, they expected Minnesota to really move the ball on offense. They've done that, albeit a little bit late. But they're going to be happy. This will be a 52-yard offering. Fleeman has it on the way. It doesn't appear to have quite enough, and it is short and wide to the right. He kicked it a little fat, a little heavy, and the ball skirts off to the right. And that's it through 30 minutes of play. But what do you think? you got to feel good about the way that Wichita State has come up here and responded to the pressure of playing against their first-ever Big Ten opponent, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. We're all even at two touchdowns apiece. In the second half of this game and for the remainder of the season is going to be a marked man. Incidentally, the University of Oklahoma opens with this ball club in two weeks. Oklahoma about four weeks behind everybody else opening up, and it will be right here in Minneapolis against these same Golden Gophers. Brad Fleeman to kick it off deep, of course, Melvin Anderson. And he broke one for about 50 yards that was called back earlier in the ball game. Fleeman set to get it underway. It's a flat kick coming to the far sideline. Anderson lets it bounce, and it goes through the end zone, and it will be a touchback. So an effective kickoff for Brad Fleeman, who undoubtedly did exactly what he was told to do. That's exactly right. Bounce the ball in front of Mel Anderson. Don't give him a clean opportunity to handle the football. I think Mel thought that ball was going to bounce out of bounds, and he let it go. Coach Lou Holtz checking the game plan for the second half of action as his Gophers take over at their own 20-yard line. Ray Hitchcock's the big center. John Lilleberg and Dan Rechton going to the left. Troy Wilco, Jim Hobbins, and Kevin Starks across the offensive line to the tight end position. Valdez, Baylor, and David Puck in the backfield. Gary Couch and Mel Anderson are wide. Bring it along the right-hand side, and good for three yards is Fogey. Ricky Foggy, excuse me. They expect Big Ten honors out of him this year as Mitch Morris and Mark Duckins. Two guys we haven't heard a lot of thus far throughout the ball game make the combined stop. And it's going to be interesting to see how this Wichita State defense reacts now. What adjustments they've made against Ricky Foggy. That time he uh, kind of just jumped back and jumped back up through the inside. A pretty safe play. Let's see if they've designed anything to get at him individually. Second and seven from the wishbone. This time he drops back to pass. Anderson streaking down the middle. He's got distance and he makes the grab as Randall Cooper knocks him down at the 30 yard line. We talked about Minnesota's passing game. It's predominantly a long passing game. Man to man coverage against Randall Cooper. The freshman could not keep pace and Mel Anderson out of Homestead, Pennsylvania drags it down at the 32 for easily the longest gain of the ball game. Anderson went off with a little bit of a limp there. We're not sure how bad that is. He had Cooper burned earlier in the game, and he had, he had a step on him this time. Randall Cooper, of course, a converted 
wide receiver now trying to play defensive back and he was about one step short that time the Gophers are in business at the 33 this time from the eye at the 33 yard line foggy calling the signals as Minnesota tries to strike quickly and early along the left hand side it's Valdez Baylor picking up yardage to the 20 to the 16 yard line before Cooper finally knocked him out of bounds and if you're Wichita State this is your worst fear being realized because the Shockers have not come out tough defensively here in the early going as Baylor picks up good yardage, sweeping it to the left-hand side. Nothing fancy about this. Just turn and pitch it and let him go. Looks like the defense overran that play a little deep that time. Dynamite they game. Did a nice job sealing off the linebacking core, and Cooper had to come up from the secondary to make the play. Valdez Baylor out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Foggy hands it to Baylor again, driving to the 10-yard line, where he's finally racked up on the play by Kirk Allen. Interesting that Foggy has not been uh, as involved in the offense at this point. He's dropped back and thrown. He made a quick dive up the middle. He's pitched. He's handed off. He's kind of playing a normal quarterback now. He's not all that much involved in the offense individually. So if Wichita State was trying to get to him, they haven't had an opportunity yet. And of course, Minnesota's probably trying to exploit the tendencies that Wichita State feels that perhaps they have been able to uncover on the option in their crossing up the patterns and moving up the field effectively. This time he drops straight back. Options the left side. Couch to the five yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. They'll mark it at the seven. Kirk Allen out of Wichita East. The sophomore made the play along with Randall Cooper as we'll get another look at Gary Couch. This is just basic option football right here. A little stutter, stutter step rather to the right. They flip it back to the left and they're just picking it up a little bit at a time. There's a good look at Kirk Allen, played on a state champion, 6A East High Blue Aces, who have since fallen on some tougher times. They took it on the chin last night against the Cape and Mount Carmel team, fought very highly, 29 to nothing. First down, goal to go for the Gophers. Dave Puck trying the right side, and he goes nowhere as the Shockers stiffen at the six-yard line. Good job by the interior defensive front of Wichita State, led by Jimmy Mann. As the Gophers pick up a begrudging half yard on the play, and it'll be a second down and goal from the six. Well, that long pass completion really uh, was the meat of this drive, and uh, if you're a Gopher fan, you couldn't have asked for anything better to start off the half. Right now, they are inside the 10, knocking on the door. Rolling to his right, Foggy has run pass option. He'll hold on to the football, heading towards the goal line. He's in for a touchdown. Darrell Whitley had a chance at him at about the three-yard line, but Foggy just rammed it home, and that really shows his versatility as well as his strength as he just powered it in at the one-yard line. Big mistake, though, by the Shocker defense. You've got to go in and force Foggy to make a decision. You can't allow him to just wander around out there and decide what to do on his own. Here he is. He's looking to throw. He's looking to throw, and he has everybody just standing there. No one has made him commit, and he just leans it on in for the score. So it'll be Low Miller trying to tack on the first Minnesota lead of the ball game at 21 to 14, and it is successful. Minnesota has stolen the tide of this ball game, and it's time for the Shockers to regroup, show a little character, and come back. They've been equal to the task before. Can they come back now, facing adversity with 12-16 remaining in the third? So number 14, with your with his back turned to you, talking to the folks up here in the press box, has accounted for. 18 of the Golden Gopher points, and they lead it by a score of 21 to 14. So after being shocked, literally, early, they have come back with poise and are whittling down Wichita State, who are a little short on numbers right now, and certainly depth is going to be a problem all season, but they have been a poised football team in the past. It'll be interesting to see how they respond here. Down 21 to 14. Tony Gilbert's going to take it two yards deep in the end zone. He, along with Eric Denson, on the receiving core, and the Shockers will start it from their own 20. Obviously, a very important series of downs for Wichita State. They need to move the football, gain a little confidence in themselves, and try to stem the momentum and the flow that Minnesota has been able to generate. They need to control the ball and hang on to it for a little while to give the defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Not only rest, 
but to talk, to talk to the coaches, to talk to themselves, to try and figure out what they have to do to stop that Minnesota option offense. Good look at Chip Lowmiller, who does the kicking duties for Minnesota. Wichita State now from the split backfield. Brian McDonald, the junior out of St. Louis. Rolls right, he's under pressure, and down he goes. Joiner in on the stop, along with Steve Thompson, as Brian McDonald tastes the turf here in the third period. Now they went to the well once too many times. They tried to hit Denson out of the flat again on the quick one and give McDonald credit for not trying to force the play. That unfortunately limits your offensive diversity and the possibilities that you have now facing a second and 20. As Minnesota will go with the soft defense in the secondary playing some 18 yards off the ball deep. Now they move up as they'll go from the eye formation. McDonald with the draw the first time we've seen that and Denson has nowhere to go as he is swarmed under by a host of Golden Gophers led on the play by Anthony Burke also in on the stop was Dennis Ryan so the Shockers are backing it up towards their own goal line yeah they're kind of in a no win situation right now as you mentioned on the setup of that last play Minnesota is playing a soft defense they are in control of this game right now and they know it they're backing up just trying to keep something big from happening meanwhile the guys up front can just tee off and go after the backs Third and 21. Dangerously inside their own 10. Brian McDonald rolling to the right. He has Brock Buen down the middle trying to get it loose. Kevin Pierce got a hand on it but was unable to come up with it for first down yardage. We have a Brian McDonald is slow getting up in his own end zone. As we'll take a yet another look at Kevin Pierce who had cut open the seam all the way from the other side of the field. Pierce uh, looked as if he jumped a little bit early on this play. McDonald at this time is rolling. He's throwing, running for his life. He just kind of lunged it out there, and Pierce couldn't come away with it. McDonald is now up and walking off the field under his own power. That's a good sign, but he took a pretty good shot on that last play. Dave Armagost has had a couple of offerings, and he's taken them both off the rug tonight. He'd like a nice snap here to get this ball away. Deep to receive for Minnesota. Is Gary Couch. Armagos gets it away clean, but he does not get a good kick. Couch it takes it at the 44. He has room to his right. Trying to outrun the coverage. He gets to the sideline and is run out of bounds at the 35. But it does not bode well for Wichita State defensively as Minnesota takes over with 35 yards to Pater. Great field position now for the Gophers. They can just line up in that wishbone and continue to attack their back very much because defensing option football is something that you have to learn over a period of time. The Shockers have only tried for about a week to try and learn an option offense and uh, it's a very very difficult thing to do as they're finding out right now. And they're getting worn down a little bit physically. Remember the front line people. The key to Wichita State along the right hand side Valdez Baylor driving it. Inside the 20 yard line Chris Badsyong in on the stop along with Kirk Allen with good outside flow but not before Minnesota picks up a first down as foggy just dumping it off into the right hand flat one of the few screens we've seen for Minnesota tonight they're really opening things up offensively they got the playbook pages flying right now and they're just picking one that looks good and putting it in guy troop in on the stop as well a little housekeeping by Lou Holtz first down and 10 at the 20. From the wishbone, Minnesota comes near side. Driving outside is Baylor again. He's got running room to the 15. He's down at the 14-yard line on a nice stop by Don Weatherby. As we've said earlier in the uh, game, the key to this game defensively for Wichita State was, of course, trying to stop Ricky Foggy, who has scored all three touchdowns so far for the Gophers. But it's tough to learn and get ready to defense a Foggy when you don't have anybody that resembles him in practice to go up against. If an assistant coach or a scout team player is running an option offense and you're trying to learn it, it's just not the same. They're seeing the real Ricky Foggy tonight. This time he hands off the couch. Good running room across the 10 to the 8-yard line and good for a first down in Minnesota. He's coming knocking once more 56,094 in attendance tonight as we take a look at Gary Couch Kirk Allen knocked him down 
But Minnesota has a first and goal inside the Wichita State 10 yard line as they look to go two touchdowns up in the ball game. And if they do put it in the end zone one more time it uh, is going to be very very tough for Wichita State to get back into this ball game because it will be a defensive struggle on the part of Minnesota. They've looked pretty good on D lately. Left side. Good defensive play initially by Whitley, but then skirting the tackle is Gary Couch. He's going towards the corner, and he's in for a touchdown. The initial play was made by Don Weatherby. He eluded his grasp, cut back against the grain, and before Darrell Whitley could knock him out of bounds and take him down at the goal line, Gary Couch, with a good bit of maneuvering, put it into the end zone, and Minnesota now is threatening to blow this one open as they lead it 27 to 14 with two quick strikes on consecutive possessions in the third period. Not much you can do about this. Couch gets spun around, decides just to take it around the other way. 172 pound sophomore shows some speed to the corner, puts the head down and spins and just gets the ball across the line in the corner. Chip Low Miller will try to add on his signature. The snap is good, the placement as well, as is the kick. So it's a 28 to 14 ball game and how quickly the tide comes in in Minnesota. Shockers down by two touchdowns as they try to regroup. Out of Davenport, Iowa, sticks it in the end zone with a nifty bit of running. Don Weatherby made the play initially, but Couch showing good improvisational skills goes the other way and beats Daryl Whitley to the corner and knocks it home. The extra point was good and we stand at 28 to 14 and we are nearly halfway through the third period. So Wichita State has seen a tight ball game explode to one that threatens now to be a blowout. And it's character building time for the offense. It really is. They're down by 14, but they can't consider themselves out of it because you got to remember they were up 14 to nothing before Foggy and company put 28 unanswered points on the board. Low Miller kicks it right down the middle, and this will be Tony Gilbert receiving it at the goal line. He starts off to his right. Shocker's trying for a return to the 15 to the 20. Good yardage to the 25. And so Tony Gilbert pops it out there to the 25-yard line on the stop with Steve Gibbons and the Shockers will start from their best field position yet in this the second half of action Tony Gilbert has seen sparing varsity action but tonight has responded well on this kickoff now we're going to have to see a new wrinkle or two on offense from Wichita State Minnesota has pretty much figured out what they're going to try to do on offense they've taken away that short screen they've taken away the deep handoff to the tailback let's see what they come up with when you're down 14, there are not a lot of ways to get quickly back into the ball game unless you utilize the passing game. But they'll stay on the ground. Coming to the near side is Eric Denson. Looked like he had an opening for a moment, but he's racked up on the play by Bruce Holmes. We're not sure about the status of Velasco Smith right now. He uh, had a neck injury earlier in the game. He did return and looked to be all right. But he's the guy who you might want to get into the game pretty soon. He is a game breaker type. He is the kind of guy who, if he gets the ball in the open field, can make things happen on his own. Velasco Smith, if he can return and get back into the game, may be the key to a possible comeback. Shockers face a second and long seven. They're at their own 28-yard line. Little check action draw across the 35 skirts Eric Denson. It'll be a third and one when we resume action. Pete Nigerian and Matt Martinez on the stop for the University of Minnesota. I'm extremely impressed with Pete Nigerian. He led this team in tackles a year ago with 81 solo efforts, 63 assists for 144 total. He's got great lateral mobility in the middle. It's 6'2, 222. He's got good strength, and he's a good one for the University of Minnesota. Third and one for Wichita State. Now at the 35-yard line. McDonald brings them set. Pitches deep in the backfield. Coming to the near side is Denson being strung out. And I don't believe he got it. Denson running hard, but not putting his head down and trying to bull forward for the yardage. It'll be interesting to see where they spot it, but I don't believe he got the... You know, Yardage for the first down. They're going to bring it in as Nigerian and company racked him out of bounds. And that spot does not bode well for Wichita State on a third and one. No, uh, it's close, but I don't think he's going to have it if he does. It's going to be by the nose of the football. A strange call there to pitch the ball to the deep back on a sweep and give that defense time to string it out, as they did on that play. 
And here come the sticks. Shocks are going to be short by about six inches, and Ron Chismar from his own 35 yard line has a decision forthcoming. I think he's going to go. I think he is going to go. You would think it would almost be automatically a punt, but down 14 points. He is obviously playing to be competitive in the football game. So our hats go off to Ron Chismar and a courageous decision. Others might call it otherwise. I don't know, but Ron Chismar is the kind of football that I certainly like. It's entertaining oh, football, yeah. and that's what you can expect from Wichita State. A fourth and one from their own 35-yard line. McDonald turns, gives to Denson, and they come up with the first down. So it pays off, and Ron Chismar plays the prophet as he is on the far sideline. Kind of had a little whimsical look on his face, like, hey, no big deal. I knew we were going to get that one all along. And really, the way Minnesota's moved the ball in this quarter, I don't think it really matters whether you give it to them at the 35 or their own 35. If you'd look at that statistic right there, you'd say it's a pretty close football game. And indeed, it has been throughout most of the contest. Just recently, has Minnesota broken out to a two-touchdown lead. Wichita State trying to sustain some consistent offensive action here as they bring it set at the 37. Their own. Looking for the quick pattern across the middle, and it went out of the hands of Fewen, and he was met very hard indeed by Donovan Small, as he'll get up slowly and think about that as he heads back to the Wichita State huddle. Let's take another stick, a look at the stick that Brock Fewen gets here. He does get popped, and that ball goes up in the air briefly again. Kind of a risky play to be jumping up inside there, but they're obviously trying to get Minnesota out of whatever defensive alignment they've been running lately. As the wave sweeps the Metrodome. Second and ten for Wichita State. Denson and Wilson the setbacks. Quick slip draw. Denson finds running room. Squirting free to the 45. He's to the 47. Nice individual bit of running by Eric Denson who is close to first down yardage. Mark Dusebeck and Donovan Small on the stop. But more and more, Eric Denson seems to be getting into the flow of this offense, and he has certainly been the main threat for Wichita State on the ground both last week and again this week. Good running from the senior out of Titusville, Florida. That time, uh, the Gophers were in a 5-2. One of the linebackers jumped up to make a six-man line, and that's why Denson had a little bit of running room once he cleared the line of scrimmage. First down as he picks up yardage. Close to the 50 for Wichita State. Denson again, this time cutting back against the grain. Ball is loose when I think Wichita State came up with it. At the 49-yard line, Bruce Holmes applied the hit. Eric Denson took a shot and was doubled back. David Williams in on the pile as well as Denson gets up slowly. Jumping on the football was Eddie Hawkins, the tight end. Watch Eric Denson cut back against the grain. Temperature of this game beginning to rise ever so slightly right now. The crowd's getting into it. Wichita State has a little bit of momentum, and the Gophers are hitting on defense. This third quarter is getting interesting. 5:35 of which remains at the 49 of Minnesota. Wichita State trying to sustain the offense. They split the backs. McDonald straight drop back. Slip. Little quick screen to Denson. He's at the 50 to the 45, cutting it to the 40. Nice move back to the 35, just shy of the 35-yard line. And again, a nice bit of individual effort by Eric Denson. Gary Had and Bruce Holmes were in on the stop. That time the screen looked good, and give Brian McDonald some credit for looking off the secondary. He's doing a good job looking downfield, then checking over and getting the ball over to his halfback. And look at the job Denson does here, threading his way around, making a couple of guys missing. That was a nice effort, and now, all of a sudden, the Shockers are rolling. Nice job by the folks up front. Keith Blunt with a good block there as the gang up front unheralded, but doing a good job both last week and again this week. McDonald sets them in the eye. They're strong right. Sends it to the second deep man back. That's Velasco Smith with a burst of speed across the 35 to the 33. Steve Thompson along with Bruce Holmes on the stop. And as Kerry mentioned, the Shockers are slowly chipping away with a sustained drive. Moving the ball down the field, 436 and counting down in the third period. This is giving the defense a little time to recuperate on the sideline. It's giving the offense some renewed, some renewed confidence. No doubt about that. Now facing a second down, six for Wichita State. They go from the pro set. 
Jose Wilson on the slant and he's going nowhere. Well, nothing going on that play that time, but you got to give the Shockers a lot of credit. They go for it on fourth and short at their own 35. They run a couple of risky pass plays, but they're keeping themselves in this ball game. They're not beaten yet, and that's the message that they have to communicate to this Gopher defense right now is that they haven't given up. And you've got to be proud of them just from that standpoint. Three of five from third down conversions for Wichita State. They face a third and five right now. Tony Gilbert in the ball game in the place of Eric Denson. McDonald with a deep drop has a man on the flat. That's Gilbert picks up the first down and he's knocked down at the 22 yard line. So Wichita State with a short passing game as Steve Rodas from the nose guard position strangely enough in the secondary made this tackle on defense as Tony Gilbert has been productive just about every time he's touched the football tonight. That play was very well set up. The middle of the field was wide open. They dumped it off into kind of the left middle of the field. And a good job there. That was a great call. And now the Shockers are inside the Minnesota 30. Brian McDonald has moved this ball club. At the 23. Gilbert again with the ball, and he's knocked down shy of the 20-yard line, a begrudging yard of one. Nigerian on the stop as he has been much of the night. Now it's about at this time in the offensive scheme that the Shockers have gone to that flat pass. They've tried to set up that screen pass. They run right, they run left, they try something downfield, and then they fall back on that screen play. Let's see what they come up with this time. McDonald went over the, to the sidelines briefly after that play. Let's see what he picked up over there. Ron Chismar, of course, the offensive coordinator, along with his duties as head coach. He calls every play from the sideline. A single signal system worked out between he and his quarterback. McDonald this time, play action draw. Looking, he has time. Now is rushed on the play, and he's going to go down at the 38-yard line. A good defensive play by Doug Mueller, who came strong, and the Shocker receivers couldn't shake the coverage as Mueller and uh, Ross Sokolberg make the play for Minnesota, and this time McDonald just didn't have time to hit his receivers. No, he didn't. It was a good call. They did change things up with the play action, but as you can see, McDonald has nowhere to go. Everybody was covered, and he'll have to go down. He actually had time initially. Good blocking by the offensive backfield, but just didn't have anybody to throw you to. You bet. Nothing doing in the secondary. So now a third down and 21 situation for the shots. McDonald in an obvious passing situation looking he's pressed up the middle Jose Wilson he was there as he flared towards the end zone but the ball was just overthrown and Wichita State stalls and that will bring on Brad Fleeman and a field goal attempt there was a kind of a questionable call in the second quarter on Jose Wilson supposedly making illegal use of his hands on a passing play. That time, it looked to me as if Wilson was detained a little bit by a linebacker or a cornerback, just a little bit of a brush. That was one of the reasons that he wasn't able to get downfield and grab that lob from McDonald. This will be a 53-yard offering from Brad Fleeman. He was short from 52 yards earlier. Snap is down. The placement good from Dave Armagos. This kick is going to be shy. Just a few yards from Brad Fleeman. So not quite enough for the freshman, and we will leave it at that. 28 to 14, 132 and counting in the third frame. People are making any excuse to take home a Yamaha ATV. Mom, I can use it to take out the trash. Because right now, you can get your best deal ever on a Yamaha three or four wheeler. Look, lame brain, you always said we should have a hobby. You can even take a demo ride and see some of the new 86 models. It will be educational for the children. The Yamaha 3 for All celebration, because saving money is the best excuse of all. Honest, hon, it followed us home. Coors showed me how they do things different, all the way down the line. And heat like this, that's important. Why? Well, heat heavies up the taste of beer. Any beer. If you went down to any Coors warehouse, this is what you'd see. Coors, stored cold. Now, Coors is the only one that can say that. It's expensive, kind of a hassle. But Coors distributors think it makes a difference. Right here, a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. 
As was evidenced by that last offensive drive from Wichita State, the football game is certainly not over by any standpoint, but there is no question the defense must answer the call soon if there is to be any hope whatsoever. Minnesota takes over at their own 36-yard line. Ricky Foggy continuing to call the signals. Rolling this time. Going to hold up with the football to the 40-43 yard line. He's finally dragged down there after a gain of five yards. Kirk Allen in on the stop. Along. We don't know who that's going to be along with. We'll figure that out in a minute as we take a look at Foggy again. Got to get to Foggy a little bit quicker than that. You've got to disrupt his rhythm before he gets across the line of scrimmage. Even as you see there, tripped up, he can fall for about five. That was Mike Argerbright into the football game for Wichita State. Stacked up the middle for a short game. It will be short of first down yardage. Mike Argerbright in the ball game. Maurice Foxworth, of course, out with an injury. As a matter of fact, we're seeing a lot of folks for the first time. Also back there for Wichita State. We have number 41, Kenny Stonebreaker. Third down and two for the Golden Gophers. 26 seconds remaining in the third frame. They'll go from the eye. Quick pitch to the back man. Running it up across the first down yardage. Is Pudgy Abercrombie. From Aliqua, Pennsylvania, a freshman. He picked up good first down yardage just shy of the 50 yard line. On the play defensively was Derek Westfield for Wichita State, but Abercrombie with a good move here and good yardage. As you can see on that play, the offensive front for Minnesota is doing a tremendous job of tying up the defensive down linemen of Wichita State. The corners and the backers are having to come up and make the tackles, and that's not good from a shocker standpoint. First down in midfield, and that's going to do it. We have gone through 45 minutes of football live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, and the tide has turned for Minnesota. They have taken a two-touchdown lead into the fourth and final period. It's 28 to 14. Stay here. Minnesota has the ball first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Glad to have you along on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Bruce Earl and Kerry Addington from the Metrodome. On our second broadcast of the year, next up will be Texas Arlington. Coming up later on in the season. Next week, it's Toledo at home, a 7 o'clock kickoff as Foggy sends it to the second man back. And with good running room, this is Courtney Holmes for first down yardage inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. On the stop was Stonebreaker. Depth really becoming a factor now in this ball game, and that's something that Wichita State can't really compete with Minnesota in. They got a lot of backups now in the defense, and the uh, Minnesota front line is pretty much controlling things up front. A lot of folks from the Quaker State on this Minnesota ball club. Of course, a very fertile recruiting ground indeed. First down and 10 inside the 40. Minnesota moving the football. Holmes again on the outside. Wasson. Mark Wasson. Strong safety comes up to make the play. The senior out of Andover. As we take a look at the folks along the sideline for Minnesota. Been a pretty good opener for them so far. This drive is what they would call the nailer, the coffin nailer. They want to get in, put this one into the end zone, and get this game put away. From the slot this time, showing a little bit more of a pro set. Foggy rolling to his right, has a man wide open on the flat. Mel Anderson with the play to the 20, and he's finally dragged down by Randall Cooper and Kenny Stonebreaker, but not before Anderson picks up yardage to the 19-yard line. Good for a first down, as we'll take a second look at Mel Anderson, who has proven himself to be a very able wide receiver and kick returner tonight. Not to say that it's over as far as Wichita State is concerned. They still got a lot of fight left in them, and as they put Anderson down, we'll take another look at him here as he runs the quick route, catches the ball. They try to come up and pound on him a little bit. A little bit of frustration now beginning to show among the Shockers. Randall Cooper dragged him down with a host of others. As we take a look at Mel Anderson. 
He's a good threat for this Minnesota ball club. Up along the left-hand side, driving into the 10-yard line to the 5, into the 3, before he's finally knocked down on the play by Guy Troop. Is number 33, Pudgy Abercrombie, but we have a penalty flag on the play, and I imagine we'll see this one called back against Minnesota. The penalties have been few and far between against the Big Ten ball club tonight, but this time it's a holding penalty leveled against the offensive line. Kind of a power play that time by the Gophers. They line up in the wishbone pitch to the deep back, and the other two guys just got out in front and clear the way for him, and he gets a chance to pick his hole. You couldn't quite see the hold there, but it was committed. Good call that time, and that'll negate a fine gain by the Gophers. Pudgy Abercrombie showing some pretty good prowess right there as you get a look. And Ricky Foggy, he has done his job certainly tonight in triplicate. That, of course, the three touchdowns that he has been able to score in driving this Minnesota ball club back from a 14 to nothing deficit early in the first half. Now he faces a first and 20. At the Shocker 29-yard line. 13 minutes and counting down in the ball game. Minnesota has stayed pretty much with their front line folks. Straight drop back by Foggy this time, looking to the end zone, not getting any pressure. Now has room to run, throws it instead. And Mel Anderson was wide open behind the Shocker secondary, but the flag was thrown back at the line of scrimmage, and the ball was overthrown. Wichita State has a chance to probably push him back yet again. Call will go against Minnesota. I think you have to give Foggy credit in this game for, boy, look at Lou there. He's kind of upset. What's the matter, Lou? You're winning this thing. I think you have to give Foggy credit for uh, keeping this a relatively error-free game. You know, this is something that Wichita State was hoping for coming in. They knew that Minnesota was prone to mistakes and fumbles. Their spring practices were punctuated by mistakes. But tonight, except for uh, a dropped punt and one fumble earlier in the uh, first half, they've uh, played good error-free football. And when an option team can keep the ball from uh, turning over, they're going to win 9 out of 10. Lou Holtz, his record impressive through the years, the early years at William & Mary, then to North Carolina State and Arkansas. Spent a year in there as the headband with the New York Jets in the National Football League. Foggy now just inside the Wichita State 50. We have a whistle on the play. He took a stick from Donnie Weatherby, but we had a flag on the play before action started. Now it's turning into a comedy of errors, illegal procedure against the offense, and they'll move it back yet again. Well, the best defense of the second half for Wichita State has come from the guys in the striped shirts. So it'll be a first and 42 <laughs> for Minnesota. And Lou will go through the pages in the playbook and uh, call the one that they have diagrammed for first and 43 it's going to be. Well, they undoubtedly have something for that. Oh, I'm sure they have five or ten plays ready for just this situation. So the Gophers from their own 48 now. They'll set it down from the wishbone as the Shockers take defensive alignment appropriately. They'll try the left side. Play action. Now they'll pass. They flare a man down the sideline. That's Couch. Foggy now running out of the pocket. Has yardage to the 50, 45. He's to the 40 and runs out of bounds at the 35-yard line. As the Shockers lose contain, they did a nice job defensing in the secondary, but Foggy, with all that athletic ability, able to squirt the pocket and pick up yardage to the 37-yard line. Ricky Foggy, a force to be reckoned with here in the Big Ten this season, although Minnesota has a few quirks to work out, I think, before they get into the meat of their Big Ten schedule and certainly a ball game in a couple of weeks against Oklahoma. Foggy is a quarterback, but in a wishbone offense, he's more of a running back. And here he shows a great quality, that fifth gear, that overdrive, as he just runs right by the pursuit right there and skips out of bounds. He is an all-around athlete. Timeout on the field as Minnesota will face the second and 28 when we return. Shocks are down by two touchdowns, but they're not giving in. It'll be very interesting to see what Ron Chismar has to say on the coaches show tomorrow night at 10.30. His club has played some good football here. They have shown some character. They have shown some resiliency. They trail in the ball game 28 to 14. 
as it is a second and 28 for Ricky Foggy and the Golden Gophers. This time he'll come to the near side. A rolling out. He has a run pass option looking down the middle of the field and Mel Anderson, but it's broken up by Kenny Stone Street on the play. And they'll bring it back for a third down. Kenny Stonebreaker had a chance here at an interception, and Mel Anderson came back over his back to yes, break up the play. Trade positions and play defense there at the end of that one. I'll tell you what, this Minnesota ball team is very good. They, uh, I think, are going to be competitive in the Big Ten this year. Ricky Foggy is going to be one of the outstanding athletes in the conference, if not in the country. And uh, win or lose, the Shockers don't have anything to be sorry about today. They've played a good ball game, and Minnesota is going to give people some problems. The Sooners are going to be interested in looking at this game film. Third and 28 now. Foggy with a little misdirection in the backfield, flaring down the middle for Gary Couch. And it was inadvertent contact, they're saying, as... Randall Cooper and Gary Couch got caught up a little bit down there. The fans wanted pass interference, obviously, but they're not going to get the call as they rule it inadvertent contact. You be the judge as Couch is on the floor. Now there's a little uh, arm there, and now Couch has passed, and there was a trip, but that was inadvertent. Actually, it might have not even been a trip. Uh, there might have been some contact, but he may have stubbed his toe on the turf here. It's a very easy thing to do, having played on the AstroTurf. I can attest to it, as I was frequently stumbling around out there. That's what I heard, Bruce. No question about it. That's why I'm in the booth. Punt forthcoming. The first one for Minnesota in the ball game. Cooper will let it bounce at the goal line. He was in the end zone. That's going to be a touchback. They batted it back out, as a matter of fact, and that's a penalty. So Wichita State, on top of the touchback, is going to get some yardage tacked on on the penalty for batting the football. Low Miller handles pretty much all the kicking chores on this Minnesota ball club. As the Shockers trail 28 to 14 with 12 19 remaining, who knows? Stranger things have happened. They'll try to get back in it when they take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Ford is helping to make automotive history with an offer you'll find hard to beat anywhere. First, we're closing out every leftover. Going nowhere as we rejoin action. Good defensive play out there by a host of Minnesota Golden Gophers led on the charge by Rick Page. Velasco Smith, not much running room, Kerry. No, not that time. At this point in the game, though, it's a good uh, time to get the ball into Smith's hands because, as we've said earlier, he can make something happen for you. Just under 12 minutes to go in the ball game. Shockers need a big play very soon. They go slot left from the I formation. Dwight Eaton with Velasco Smith behind him. Play action, he'll roll right, this time with protection. It looks up the field. And in the coverage he throws. Unfortunately, the ball skitters down out of the reach of the Minnesota secondary. And it'll necessitate a third and nine situation for Wichita State. Brian McDonald, a bit beleaguered here in the second half of action, has not seen things go his way as he did throughout the first half. Nice sustained drive the last time they had the football. And, of course, they would like to now start working the ball down the field and perhaps stick it in there for a score. There's a lot of time, and if they can get a score and maybe take five or six uh, minutes off the clock in doing so, there's always that chance that Minnesota's going to cough up the ball. They've looked pretty sloppy on their last two possessions. This baby isn't over yet. Wichita State is hung tough in this ball game. Brian McDonald, slip draw with running room. Velasco Smith, now the hole. Closes oh so quickly at the 25, and that's where the shocker drive will stall as... David Armagost will come in to kick it away. Velasco Smith has taken a licking tonight. There's no question about it. And he got a whole lot of hurting on this series of sticks coming up. 181 pounds against about 300 here. Is it going to do you very much good? And they gang up, put him in the phone booth, and slam him to the turf right there. Shocker's going to have to punt the ball away and hope for a turnover. Armagost will kick it away. Gary Couch stands poised on his own 35. He gets a good delivery this time and kicks it away. Doesn't turn over for him. Couch has a chance to return. It bounces. There turn we go. Over and Wichita State comes up with it. So how about that? That's like a long pass to the 47. The Shockers come up with it. Couch has had a couple of problems catching the football on the punt throughout the evening. And the Shockers now will get a turnover and a chance to get something going here. Let's watch it again. 
Well, I came up with my Karnak move of the night, looking for a turnover, and here we go. Like we said before the game, in pregame warm-ups, none of the Gopher punt returners could field a punt. They dropped almost everyone they got. They bounced off, and now here's a guy sitting here saying, why? Why can't I catch the ball? Bad fundamentals that time. Get those elbows together. The ball won't go through. Larry Holmes, a reserve inside linebacker, made the play in the Wichita State Shockers with renewed hope at the 48 of Minnesota. Straight drop back deep by McDonald. It's batted down at the line of scrimmage. And perhaps that was just as well as Minnesota had the play covered in the Wichita State receiving core. We'll take a second look. Well, this could have been a good pickup. McDonald did have a receiver open. But the big hand of number 90 went in there and knocked that baby down. That, of course, is Ross Huckleberg. I wasn't even going to try that. I didn't want to. Velasco Smith with a slip draw and hit uh, nowhere, folks. As what was working earlier now has Brian McDonald in a state of consternation later. As his club is not moving the football right now, Velasco Smith with the little slip draw that worked nicely against K-State goes nowhere here as a host of Golden Gophers are on the play, led defensively by the surge of Donovan Small. Obvious passing situation here. Maybe that play action is what the doctor ordered. Franchismar catching a glance at the clock. It reads 9.59 in ticket. Single setback. Brian McDonald on a third and 12. Would like to keep the drive alive. Rolling to his left. Pressure from the weak side. Gets it off for Tony Gilbert. And we got some sticking going on the weak side. And penalty flags are down. And I wouldn't be surprised to see again another illegal use of the hands. But I think we're happy what we're seeing here with Wichita State. And that's what it's going to be. Illegal use of the hands. Shocker receivers are trying to pick off and basically screen defenders like you would on a basketball floor. Exactly. And they're using their hands and they are being caught. You couldn't see it right there as Tony Gilbert made the play. But there's no question the officials are laying in wait for it right now. And that, unfortunately, is the third time it's been called against the Shockers. It's a loss of down. Plus the yardage on the play. And the Shockers will be forced to kick it away as they move it back to the 35-yard line. David Armagost will kick it away, and Gary Couch will try his luck again. Well, that's not Couch. It's Mel Anderson back there now. Going to get a guy with some hands. So Couch is on the couch, and Armagost will root it away. Rolls it end over end. The ball comes bounding down at the 30, takes a Minnesota bounce, and the Shockers down it at about the 25-yard line. So they got a little bat on the ball. Darrell Whitley knocks it down. Time's wasting, 9.35 and counting. Shocks continue to trail, 28-14. Right there, Ricky Foggy on a quick quarterback draw. Took one step back and bolted for 15 yards. Good for a first down. Minnesota at their own 45-yard line. Backing Wichita State up. 28-14, nine minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the football game. First man through, driving to the 50-yard line. And inside Shocker territory. On the drive, Kevin Wilson, two-year letterman out of Aurora, Illinois. Ricky Foggy, an impressive entity behind that center. Lou Holtz has been around long enough to know that this game is far from over 8.45 now, remaining in the contest. But he knows it's not over, and he's going to keep Ricky Foggy in there. Obviously, his team's success is going to be based around this young man this year. So you think he might want to pull him out, but not yet. Game experience ever so important as That's they get right. set for the University of Montana next week. Just inside Shocker territory from the wishbone, Foggy calling the signals. Pitches to Valdez Baylor, and this time he's racked up behind the line of scrimmage on a good defensive play by Derek Westfield, who has picked up right where he left off last week against Kansas State. A very aggressive freshman out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, a baseball player as well as football player in that time. Just good quickness and headhunting skills racked up the play behind the line of scrimmage. 205 pounds, not especially big, but he makes up for it with tremendous heart and a willingness to stick his head in there. He likes to hit you. 
That's what you want from a defender. Third down and five for Minnesota. Foggy will go with a single setback. Kevin Wilson lines up behind the quarterback. Quick drop. Now he runs with the football. He's got the first down and more before Kirk Allen and Mark Duncans combine to make the stop. And Foggy again showing his versatility, picking up a key first down as time ticks away on the Shocker chances. Well, it's not over yet. When you're only two scores down, there's always a chance of getting a couple touchdowns and maybe a two-point conversion. Lou Holtz, as we mentioned, is well aware of that. He's got his front liner still in the ball game. And as you said, Bruce, game experience very important. Of course, this is the opener for Minnesota. So far, they've got to be pleased with their play through the first three quarters. This last one's been uh, kind of sloppy. Two quick scores in the early part of the third period. The difference in the ball game is flags all over everywhere. Stop play on a first and ten from the Wichita State 43. We'll do it again. And we've got a legal procedure against the offense, and they'll knock it back five yards, setting up a first and 15. Shockers in Toledo next week, the defending Mid-American Conference champions, a team that lost to Nevada Las Vegas in the California Bowl last year. To Randall Cunningham, who is now the starting signal caller with the Philadelphia Eagles supplanting Ron Jaworski. Kick off at 7 o'clock at Cessna Stadium. Get out and support these Shockers. They are certainly an improved football team and a team more than worthy of your support. And I think the Gophers would agree with that. Tonight. I don't think there's any question that they have their respect. First and 15 from the wishbone. Foggy bringing it to the near side. Sticks it in the gut. Holds on to the football. Driving to the 45. And uh, cuts up underneath the defense. Pursuing on the play. Stonebreaker had a chance as he is hobbled. Heading back to the secondary on the stop. Derek Westfield and Guy Troop flowing on the play. Watch Ricky Foggy right here reading the defense ever so nicely. He makes it look so easy as all great athletes do. He looks them off to the outside. Gathers himself up. Cuts up. Gets about five more than a normal guy would then. 6'1", 180 pounds of fluid motion at quarterback. A little bit tall for an option quarterback. But unlike other option quarterbacks, he gives you the dimension of a thrower as well as he has proven tonight on occasion. Second man through. Driving the ball is Pudgy Abercrombie. A misnomer to be sure, the first name. He is sleek and he runs the ball well to the 32-yard line where he stopped on the play by Kirk Allen and Jim Mann. Straight ahead give that time. Minnesota just trying to control the ball, trying to move down the field. Foggy, as we mentioned a second ago, at 6'1", taller than most option quarterbacks. You'd expect him maybe to be a little lanky, but he does have total coordination. And as Bruce said, he is a pretty good passer. He threw for 10 touchdowns last season. This time he sets it from the eye, and he gives it to the second man back, skirting up the middle, trying to find the room, is freshman Ed Penn out of Tampa, Florida. 6'2", 200-pound reserve, and he picked up first down yardage for a better part of four yards to the Shocker 26. Five minutes and 15 seconds counting down. As I said earlier, two quick scores by the Gophers to open the third period has really been the difference in this ball game as Wichita State has more than held their own against Big Ten competition. First ever meeting against a Big Ten competition, incidentally. Foggy hands again to Abercrombie, and this time he's stopped after a gain of one. Mark Duckins, Jim Mann, and the host of Shockers in on the play. Defense, as we take a look at the effervescent talent of Kirk Allen, has been yielding, certainly, today on occasion, but again, has not broken. I have played tough comeback character-building football, and I know that we're digging to the cliches a little bit here, but certainly you've got to look for that silver lining with this defense because it's a defense that was moved on practically at will last year. Looking for the reverse right here. Falls on the ground, and now it's Melvin Anderson coming back the other way, but it's snuffed out on the play nicely by Guy Troop, who stayed home. 
And so Minnesota will either try for three or punt the ball away. Who knows what Lou Holtz will have in mind here. Troop getting some valuable experience. Freshman from Tulsa coming in and playing for the injured Mo Foxworth. And this experience that this defense gets against a large, quick, talented Minnesota offense is going to help them throughout the entire season. Ron Chismar, in talking in his preseason comments about the openers he had, didn't want to open with Kansas State, didn't want to open with Minnesota, not so much from the standpoint of fearing those of fearing those teams, but from the standpoint of the rate of attrition, the injuries that you sustain against big, strong, physical football teams. Foggy right now on a fourth down is going for it. The Shockers show blitz. Stonebreaker dragging it in. They hit the tight end, but he's going to be stopped short of the first down. A nice play by Mark Wasson out of Andover, Kansas, and the Shockers will take over. So... Foggy comes up a yard shy on this conversion attempt in Wichita State.